Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel for a brand new video. It is not Makeover Monday, however, I think you guys will let me off the hook once you realize what I am building here. So as the title says, this is a bookshop and a bakery, and this goes back a little while, about three months ago. I think this goes all the way back to my last What the Plum episode. On Tumblr, I received a message from the Onyx Edition and they asked me if I could possibly build more community lots and suggested even a bakery. So that's where this idea has come from and I haven't built a community lot in a long, long while. I think the last community lot that I put out on my channel was The Pines, which is a seasonal festival lot and that was years ago. So I thought, why the heck not? Not, let's build a bakery but then I decided to take it one step further and I wanted to add a bookshop to the side of it so as you can see now the bookshop is on the left and the bakery is on the right and then about four weeks ago on my community tab I asked you all if you wanted the deliciously decadent bakery which I'm a moron it's called the deliciously indulgent bakery set if y'all could give me some names suggestions for a bookshop slash bakery what would you guys call it so I obviously didn't put th what this build is called in the title because I wanted to wanted it to be a little bit of a surprise but we'll get to that a little bit later so you guys are going to have to wait but you guys can see that this is quite a long video so I hope you've got your snacks your popcorn your water your tea your cider whatever it is you are eating and drinking to watch this video because it is a doozy but as you can see the outside is pretty much complete and I am very happy with how this looks. Of course, I'm always happy with how my builds look because if I wasn't happy with it, I wouldn't put it out. So I love the idea of mixing different styles. So I really wanted the bakery part to be an industrial bakery and then I wanted the bookshop part to be an old rustic type of building and I think those two styles go really really well together and I had a lot of fun building this it did take me a while I can't tell you how many times I bulldozed this lot um, this is built at 1135 Merchant Way in Moonlight Falls and the building that's to the right of this one was actually originally on this lot and I just moved it over because I thought this was a better place for a bookshop and a bakery. So as you can see, I am using things from the deliciously indulgent bakery set. And I don't think I've, well, I've never built a bakery, so I've never used all of the items that came with this set, but they are just so cute. I think the Sims team did a really good job with this set. It is one of the later ones, and I feel like with the later sets that came out in The Sims 3, they were better. And I think that's just with anything The Sims team does. As the years go on, they get better and better, and they improve a lot more. And of course, what would an old rustic building be without a little bit of ivy? I'm obsessed with ivy on old buildings. I just think it looks so good, and it just brings a little bit of charm to a build. Is it charming? Do you guys think it's charming? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, let me know down below in the comments. How are you guys? I've missed you. I know I say that in every build that I do where I'm actually talking to you guys, but I do miss you guys when I'm not putting out videos, when we're not connecting in the comments or on the community tab. So I want to know how you all are doing. Things in the UK are a little bit, I don't know, hinky. Can we say hinky? Um, I don't know if we're headed towards another little quick lockdown. I'm not looking forward to that if that is the case because I've only kind of gotten used to going outside. <laughs> I'm like seeing friends and being around other people and I would just be so sad if we had to lock down again, even if it was for two weeks. I think that would be really, really hard. That's like opening things up and then shutting them down again and you've had it and now you can't have it anymore. It's, it would just make me very upset. Right, this long bush plant planter thing, um, I couldn't delete it. <laughs> I had to quit out of the game um, in order for it to be gone because I placed it on the edge of the lot and I couldn't get rid of it. So I didn't really like it there. 
and it wouldn't allow me to change my mind so I was like nope I've got to delete everything so everything that you're seeing now um, is going to change slightly or I had to redo from memory because I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Why can I not delete this? I was so upset uh, because I thought this planter box that I'm putting in now would look a lot better than that long ass one that I've got on the side of the building. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I thought I'd try something out new and it didn't work. <laughs> So here's a word of advice. If you're using that long planter box, I don't remember which pack it came from, but it is out of debug. Don't put it on the edge of, the edge of your lot because you will not be able to delete it. But I actually didn't show me redoing that because you've already seen it once. You don't need to see it twice. So we have moved on to the inside of the building. Um, on the bakery side of things so the right side like I said is the bakery the left side is the bookshop and then upstairs there's a little cafe moment so I'm gonna use some spiral stairs and I just really love this lot I really love how it turned out and like I said I don't build community lots very often um, but this one is just a peach it's a little diamond and I'm really happy with it and if I owned a bakery and a bookshop this is how I'd want it to look so does anybody have like any grandiose ideas of owning a bakery or a bookshop? I've always wanted to own a bookshop just because I love to read. Um, so this is kind of like my ideal type of bookshop. So I've laid mostly everything out in the bakery. I've put in the toilets and this is the little sort of sunroom area that's off the bakery and I just thought it would be a cute little area for your sims to sit down and have some baked goods. Now I'm placing these, um, what are they, greenhouse windows and they just don't look good. I don't know why I thought they looked good in the first instance, but I did. Uh, so those are going to change and I don't believe that I changed them on camera um, because, you know, placing windows is a little bit tedious, but you'll be able to see through screenshots what I use in the very very end and so this is the bookshop area and I thought it'd be cute to have a little fireplace and sort of the backstory that I have for this build is that the bookshop part has always been there so that's why it's the older part and then the bakery was added on the side to be more of an industrial piece but I will read you the full description in a little bit I'm gonna keep you guys on tinder hooks at least if I can for halfway through this video just so just because I want to <laughs> it's not very nice is it um I've been loving these shelves from university I've been using them in a lot of my builds and um, in all of my residential builds really because they just look they just work. They work for the builds that I've been working on and I'm so excited to share the builds and some of the builds for the series that I have on my channel. I'm excited to share them because I've been having so much fun putting them together. They have been taking me ages, um, but you guys all know that I'm an indecisive sloth. I am slow. For instance, I started this build about a month ago and it's just been sat waiting to be edited and then it was waited, waiting to be voiced over. So I'm just slow and editing. The editing part of any video is just a pain because you have to end up cutting out so much footage. And yeah, so anyway, we made it, we've done it. And if you can hear that siren, I'm very, very sorry about that. I do live very close to an ambulance station, so I get sirens quite a bit. Now, you just saw me place down some arcade machines and also some sectional seating area. That's going to change, and it doesn't change until the screenshots when I was play testing it, because what I didn't realize, and I thought that it wouldn't be a problem but in the sims 3 there's obviously a roof covering that portion from the bookshop uh, part of this build and it it covers where the arcade machines are so sims can't access it for some reason i thought that they would be able to access it but they can't so i had to close that area off i left the bump out out because it made sense with the build um but we'll just say it was an old storage area and it needed to be closed off because there were ghosts or something. I don't know. That's not really a good excuse. Um, but yeah, so it's closed off. It still looks really good up there and you won't be able to notice a difference until, like I said, we get to the screenshots. 
So you can see that I've changed the windows in the sort of cafe sitting area and I went with windows from Into the Future and I like them because they're very very seamless and it looks like it's all one glass partition. It looks better than the base game one so obviously it doesn't look like one whole glass partition because you can see the seam in the middle but it looks a lot better than the base game ones. I'm a big big fan of those windows from Into the Future. Um, and sorry for the back and forth here I was just trying to pull things from the front to the back and out here there's not a lot of space in the back of the cafe in the or sorry in the back of the bookshop in the bakery but I did want to have sort of some activities so I'm gonna struggle a little bit with this swing here <laughs> For quite some time and I end up getting rid of the double swing and just putting one swing and then we've got some seating area outside for when it's nice so if you don't want to sit in the little cafe area you can come and sit outside and I'm gonna turn that into a patio deck and then there is another um, seating area on the decking and then there's access outside access from the bookshop and also from the the bakery so here I am still trying to get two swings in but finally I gave up and I was like nope it's not gonna work stop trying <laughs> and we went with that singular swing so you can have sims out here uh, kind of just hanging out in the swings or swinging they can come out and they can play horseshoes and I've never played horseshoes has anybody ever played horseshoes I think it would be a fun game to play I used to play um, I think it's called cornhole. Does anybody know what I'm talking about where you got the bean bags? Why did I get rid of the swing? I swear I bring the swing back. I swear I do bring the swing back. I have no idea why I got rid of it. But anyway, um, I used to play this game called cornhole and it's got three holes on the board. I'm doing this from memory. It's been so many years since I played. I was so good at it as well, but it's been so many years since I played and there's three different holes, I think, and each hole is... A different point is is worth different points and the um the board I guess you would call it is on a slant like an upward slant and you, you use bean bags I don't know does anybody know what I'm talking about it was there I go trying to get put in double swings it's not gonna work Erica stop with the double swings um, does anybody know what I'm talking about Cornell is like the best game in the world and I wish I still had a board that I could play but I don't really have a back garden to play it in but I love that game I would love to see something like that in the sims that would just remind me of my childhood but alas I went with the horseshoe courts instead so there's two of them and this is basically the back garden area I put some spring riders out there for your children or your toddlers and then yes I did go with one swing I put a hopscotch court there on the side and I always like to try to when I'm using con concrete recolor the hopscotch court so that it looks like it was drawn straight on to the concrete if that makes any sense whatsoever so as you can see I am recoloring everything on the outside so we won't be revisiting the outside again I think there might be a couple screenshots at the end where I do show the outside because it is pretty darn cute but we're back on the inside now and I've used my favorite flooring. I've been using this flooring for months and it is base game flooring. It's just recolored to be darker and I thought that would be perfect for the industrial part as well as the, um, the bookshop part. So we're just going to do a little bit of recoloring. I don't remember because like I said, it has been a while since I put all this footage together. I don't remember if I clutter it up straight away or if I come back and re and clutter everything up. Ooh, I'm losing my words here. I'm losing my words, but we're, we're going to get there. Um, so the main colors that I went for in the bakery side of things was navy blue and yellow. I really love that color scheme together and I just think it looks really really good so that's what I went with so the seating at the front which is another little seating area where you could possibly sit down and you could have um, goodies is a very bright mustard yellow and I think I think it works I think it works I I'm, I'm just happy with that I'm pleased as punch with this with this build especially because I don't do 
community lots very often at all. And I want to build more community lots. I want to make over some of the community lots in Riverview. Of course, I'm going to get to all of them at some point, even if it takes me years and years and years and years and years. Um, but I do want to build more community lots. So if you guys can think of any community lots that you would like to see or possibly have in your game, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to tackle them at some point. Speaking of tackling things, um, you guys all know that I am super duper slow, especially when it comes to building. So if anyone ever suggests something, I do write it down. I've got a notebook full of ideas, full of video ideas that I want to do. Um, and it may just take me ages to get to it. But if I've written it down, I will get to it at some point. Um, for instance, I believe it was Lori who said that she wanted to see more build challenges uh, for The Sims 3. So I have a few written down that I want to do. Um, I did the 10 minute build challenge a couple weeks ago. And so, yeah, I will get to them at some point. I'm just super duper slow. And I mean, something like this, this bakery bookshop took me... I would say in total a week to build, probably about five hours in total. And that doesn't include me laying everything out at least four or five times and bulldozing it because I always like to get the shape right and I like it to look just so. And for some reason I have it in my head that if I build it once, I'll be able to build it again while I'm filming and it'll be a lot quicker and a lot faster. Um, I don't know if that theory is true at all because I'm still slow as all get out, but <laughs> I do think it makes me a little bit faster and it cuts down on the indecision if you guys can believe that. <laughs> um, I don't tend to decorate when I'm mapping things out. So when I do decorate, that is the slowest part and that's just because I'm trying to think of things off the cuff of my head. Um, so that's why I'm really slow in that particular area. But here comes these sofas and I love that they are this bright mustard orange. This place gives me fall vibes. So we are almost, I think it's today, no, tomorrow's the first day of autumn or fall. Um, so this, this build is kind of perfect to go out now. And did I mention that I built it in Moonlight Falls? Um, Moonlight Falls is the world that came with Supernatural. And it is one of my favorite worlds to build in. I'm not a big Supernatural fan. And I don't tend to play with occults. I think I've told this story before, but the very, very last, like before I started doing my, my LPs on my channel, and uh, before I started my channel and just went strictly into builds, the last thing that I was doing in Sims 3 was playing sort of a vampire legacy. And I can't remember which generation I got to, um, but then I was just, I was done with the cults after the vampires. I was like, nope, not for me. <laughs> um, so I don't play with them very often. I'm more of a realistic player um, and a family oriented player or, someone who likes to create drama a little bit. I do like to create drama with my LPs. Um, so yeah, that's just me. So I think the bakery is finished and we're moving into the seating area. I decided to put a fireplace in here because I wanted to make it even cozier. Like how cool would it be to be in here in the winter and you can see the glass fogging up and the snow coming down oh i'm so excited for winter or even if it was raining outside and the rain is hitting the panes of glass and it's just so soothing and calming and you've got this fireplace and you're enjoying a nice buttery croissant or a slice of apple pie or pumpkin pie oh my goodness i would love to hang out in in a cafe like this why are there not cafes like this in the real world are there cafes like this in the real world if in your real world you have a cafe like this let me know about it. Tell me all about it. Do you visit it? Do you like it? Um, yeah, because this would be like an ideal hangout space for me. I would just 
absolutely love it. So of course, um, we have got exposed brickwork. We have also got concrete. I've been working a lot with con not working a lot with concrete. That makes it sound like I've been outside pouring and mixing it, but I've been putting a lot of concrete on the walls in the builds that I've been doing. And I don't know, there's just something about poured concrete on a wall that I really like and it really gives it the industrial vibe that I was going for. So um, I really liked it, but I did expose brickwork back here, but I also used paneling and I used the same color on the outside as I did on the inside. And I just thought it worked pretty darn well. Um, for the fireplace, I went with yellow again, like I said really dig in the yellow i really dig navy blue and yellow i just think it's a really good color scheme and that would be another thing another fun thing for you guys to let me know if you wanted to see a build with certain color schemes in them i'm totally down to do something like that so let me know if that is something that you would like to see so we have got about 10 minutes left before we get to the screenshots and i think i've been letting you guys I've been not leading you on, but I've, I've been leaving you guys hanging for, you know, the last 20 minutes. So I asked you guys, I lost my train of thought there for a second, which isn't really hard to do because I've said it before. I've gotten the memory of Dory, but anyway, I'm digressing. I am stalling, but like I said, I asked you guys on my community lot who if people didn't have the deliciously indulgent bakery set, leave me some names for a bakery slash bookstore. And I said it was for reasons. Well, I picked my favorite, favorite name. So I'm going to read the description that I have given to this lot, which you will find in the, if, if when you download this, you will find it in the, the lot description. Um, so, <clears throat> Oh, that was cute. A little, I, I don't know what that was. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting goofy here. I'm getting loopy. I'm getting goofy and I just need to focus. Um, anyway, the description for this lot is the bookshop part stood for many years, abandoned and decaying until one day property developer Luke Prest decided to restore it to its former glory. Keeping some of the original features, he decided that he wanted to add an industrial looking bakery with a cafe. He hired the quartet of Plum Dot Inc. to make his vision come alive. The bookery now is the hotspot hangout in town featuring a bookshop with a cozy reading area a bakery with ooey gooey deliciously baked goods with a sunroom seating area and an upstairs cafe area so i love the name the bookery um i'm partial to naming my lots things that start with the so that was one of the first things that drew me to that name but then also bookery it sounds like bakery and book so i thought that was very clever so luke well done i loved your name this is called the bookery and because of that i'm going to gift you the deliciously indulgent bakery set so please let me know down below in the comments um if you still don't have it and i will get that gifted to you at some point also because i want to and because i can let me know if you guys would like this set in your game and i will pick another randomized winner to have this in their game um so comment your uh what is it called sims 3 id down below letting me know if you would like the deliciously indulgent bakery set yes that is the name not the deliciously decadent bakery set i can't believe i called it that um so yes i would like to give away another copy of this venue to one lucky lucky winner so yes there it is. This is the bookery and we are in the bookshop part of the bookery. I've pretty much laid everything out now. I put a little desk back there because I thought, I don't know what I was thinking because there's not really room for a laptop or anything, but I don't know. I just thought it looked really good to have like an old desk back there with an old lamp. That lamp from base game, I use it in probably every single build of mine. That lamp and the chair from 70s, 80s, and oh no, that's not the chair from 70s, 80s, and 90s stuff pack. I'm pretty sure I've used that chair somewhere in this build, my favorite chair from 70s, 80s, and 90s stuff pack, but this is actually a chair from Supernatural, which I quite dig as well. I really do love the furniture 
of Supernatural. Again, I didn't think that I would, but it really works for kind of old rustic -y type of builds and that is exactly what this is so i tried to use a lot of supernatural in here because it fits with the world it fits with the build style that i was going with and yeah i just i don't know i love it i love this whole thing but you guys can let me know down below what you guys think i think the only part of this build that i'm a little like mm, should i have changed that should i have kept it the same is the wall coverings in this bookshop area um i like it but it may be a little bit overboard but you guys can let me know hindsight is a great thing and um yeah sometimes it just makes me think should i have done that is that the direction i should have taken it i think it fits really well i mean you guys don't know what i'm talking about yet because you can't see but i think i, I do think it fits really well it's just a case of I don't know. I don't know what it's a case of. I'm rambling. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Um, so how was your guys' day? It is Monday, of course. Does anybody have the Monday blues? I feel like sometimes I get the Monday blues, <laughs> especially when you have a really, really great weekend and then you're like, oh, I've got school. Oh, I've got work. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of have the Monday blues. However, I'm super duper excited because after I finish this voiceover, this shouldn't be this exciting, but um, I am super duper excited about it. I'm gonna walk to Subway and I'm gonna get myself a Subway salad. I've got a hankering for a Subway salad and I would walk 500 miles for a Subway salad. Um, I'm not gonna walk 500 miles. It's probably only a couple miles, but I am gonna walk there and you know, I'm gonna get back to working out a little bit because ever since the lockdown restrictions have eased up um i've been seeing my friends and going out a little bit more which includes drinking which when we first went into lockdown in the uk um i didn't drink for about three or four months um so yeah and then now that everything's opened up i'm like party so yeah um i'm trying to restrict that again and try to get back into my healthy groove because at the very beginning of lockdown i went on this massive health kick and i ordered a bunch of crap online for working out i ordered a jump rope i ordered some weights i ordered some new shoes some new workout gear a yoga mat and i was on it like a car bonnet and then they were like, oh, you can go out to the pub, you can go see friends. And then it was all over from there for me. It was just like, I screwed the pooch and I undid all of the hard work. And it's really difficult for me because I am an all or nothing person. So I can be super duper healthy and not let anything phase me. But once I get like a taste of fattening food um, or wine, it's all I want. So yeah i'm gonna try to get back to the the nothing side of things <laughs> so that i can be healthy again and enjoy things in moderation so anyway we are upstairs now and i think this is probably my most favorite area in the whole build even though it's not really the bakery and it's not really the bookshop. It's just an upstairs cafe sort of hangout area. And like you guys saw in the very, very beginning, I did put down some, what did I put down? Some arcade machines. And there's the university coffee shop bar up there. And yeah, I just, I think this would be a really, really cool space to hang out in. And I did manage to put some neon lights on the wall. Um, I do move it from there, although it does look really spectacular there. But of course I had to move it because of the roof cutting through, even though you can't see it. I mean, if you can't see it, why is it an issue? I don't get it. But anyway, we're going with, um, I was going to say we're going to go with yellow up here, but we're going to go with olive green. So you guys all know that my favorite colors are like olive green yellow and i'm really digging this navy blue at the moment so it all worked out it looks really great i'm really happy with it um i love this build you guys let me know what you think about it down below in the comments luke you let me know if you have the bakery set the rest of y'all let me know if you want it i will randomize a winner at some point probably more towards the first of october and um i will get somebody gifted with that but yeah 
we're almost to the end. Woo! I have talked your guys' ears off. I know I got a little bit rambly there. Um, I know my throat, my throat croaked like a frog. Um, my voice broke and everything, but thank you guys so much for sticking through this with me. I heart you guys so, so very much, but I think I'm going to love you and leave you guys for the rest of the video. Make sure you stick around for the screenshots. There are quite a few of them just so you can see how everything turned out, especially the space up here because it does change a little bit. Um, but if you enjoyed this, make sure to do all those cool interweb things like comment and subscribe. Make sure you've got that bell a ding dong so you can notified whenever I do upload. But for now, I'm gonna skeet, skeet, skedaddle. Don't be a pump stranger now, guys.